yourself. Yeah. Everybody, welcome to this episode of Nonstop Tech. I am your host, Doc Rock. I'm Jerome. I'm Tim. All right. So, in this episode, we're going to cover two things. We're going to cover some emails that we got from our viewers, and they asked some very specific questions. So, with these specific questions, we're going to try to give you some answers. And they're kind of broad topics, but I thought we should cover them anyway. So, one of the first questions that came in, and this came from Gene, uh, avid watcher, loves our stuff. So thank you, first of all, for watching, but then thank you for sending the question. Wanted to know a little bit about security when online in the coffee shop or open Wi-Fi. So let's cover that first. And then for the second question, coming from Tom, he wants us to do what's on our iDevices. So we're going to have to... I've got 300 apps or so. Like, no, you don't have that much time. Don't we're going to pick like five, okay. Okay? okay? So we're going to open the kimono a little bit and show you what we... Don't get crazy. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> we're going to cover what we're doing with our iDevices. Okay, so starting out with Gene's question, this is a really good question here. Security for your devices when you're on Wi-Fi in the public network. Let's think about that. I know, I know my answer, so I'm going to let Jerome go first because my answer probably won't be nice. From Mac yeah, or iOS not. perspective here? From anything. Anything? Yeah, from I was anything. gonna I was gonna let Jerome cover so, that. So what I was gonna say is if you if This you, is oh, just water by the way, there's no vodka in this cup. Oh I man if there was you better share. So um, if you see an open access point at the coffee shop, first thing I would do is talk to the owner and actually tell them, Hey, you should secure it, put a password on it. Because there's so much crap out there. What was it? Fire was it Fire Sheet from Radical? Fire so Sheet. It allowed you to kinda of get your login for Facebook and a couple other things. So That was a fun one. Yeah, got it. <laughs> so that, that's my opinion. First thing you'd want to do. All if right. you have no choice. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that the most important thing is you need to know you can use the internet when you're at a star. I'll just use Starbucks, you know, for lack of a better thing, because that's what it is. I, I, the generic coffee shop term doesn't really work with me. We're <laughs> going to call it Starbucks. Yep. You're at Starbucks, be careful of what you do. No bank transactions, no credit, credit card transactions, no purchases of any sorts. The second thing to know is anything that to do with there, there is a possibility that someone can scrub that information. Now, that being said, I don't want you to get scared. That's what I was say. The amount of people <laughs> that actually know how to sniff your packets, all three of us are in this episode. <laughs> Outside of that, most people here are not going to know. But, you know, in the, uh, in the general population, I would say there's a small percentage, like maybe 1% of the general population that knows how to do it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't. Turn off uh, Bluetooth, other advice. I'd go with. Bluetooth is another You can good hack one. in your computer through that. That's another good one. I think the, the primary thing is know what you're doing. Try not to uh, send too many passwords and things like that in the clear. And when at all possible, it's super easy. Look at the top bar on your device. Make sure the URL say HTTPS. Mm -hmm. If it says HTTPS, you're pretty much good to go. On a laptop and using Chrome, Chrome has the uh, an extension, and it's called HTTPS Everywhere, yep. I think. Let I me think double check that. that. HTTPS Everywhere Chrome extension that it will always try to use that above the regular HTTP protocol whenever possible. And that will be a good one to use anywhere. And I think that sort of covers it. I think it's also For Safari and Safari and Firefox as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's from... EFF.org and it's HTTPS7 everywhere. Again, we'll put that in the show notes. So, anything you want to add? Uh, I just say uh, be uh, not only smart about what websites you go to, but also where you're sitting. Pretty easy to just look over shoulders and <laughs> grab information that way. Yeah, like the most there. obvious way is just <laughs> like, oh, so this is. Even a non-technical person just look over your shoulders see what you're doing. See, I, you know, I think we all forget about that. The low-tech way is, the is maybe the easiest <laughs> so way. So like a telephoto camera, just boom, 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 yeah. boom you know. Yeah, low-tech <laughs> way is maybe the easiest way. Um, so super important with that. Just be careful of what you're doing. Keep your eyes open. Don't surf too many wild things when you're on the Or the last thing is bring your own Wi-Fi. There you go. Yeah, you or know, a 3G iPad. 3G iPad, 3G phone. Um, Something like a clear hotspot or a MiFi or a Sprint hotspot, something of that nature. 
those are other good ways that you can do this. And you'll mm -hmm. stay secure in your own little network. In your own little yeah. network. There we go. All right. So, you think that covers it? I think that kind of covers so. it. All right, cool. Gene, we'd like to say thank you so much for sending that in. And uh, let's get ready to cover the next stuff. What do we got here? We're going to do applications on your device. Oh, you want to go phone and iPad, or we're just going to do phone first? Do phone first. Because this could get yeah. complicated. I have 384 apps. I, don't, I forgot how many Let's, I have. I lost count. Well, you just go on the settings and find out. Yeah. Eh, too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have, for example... Wait, you have them all installed? Uh, how many apps do I have? Why would you have I've got 182. I slimmed down quite a bit in my 300, oh. 400, you said. Oh, you mean on the phone? Yeah, I'm still working on the, the belly slimming right now. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's an ongoing process Don't forget here. to insert a rim shot. No, yeah, yeah. Dish, dish. Yeah. Okay. Director, remember, insert rim shot. Okay. <laughs> That, that's I'm, I'm going to start with yeah, that is yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start with my iPhone here. Um, something that I have that I think a lot of people don't have yet, but I think you should check it out. <clears throat> camera Awesome. Camera Awesome is my new favorite camera. App. Why I like Camera Awesome? Um, it has some features that a lot of other apps don't have. It has a nice little spirit level looking thing that keeps you even on the horizon as you go to take pictures. Here, let's get an Instagram of. Topher shooting our podcast. <laughs> um, so you got the level. It has rule of third. Uh, it has some uh, composition things like the golden rule, and it'll also give you a trisec so that you can do better composition. One thing I really love is it has a thing called big button. With big button, instead of trying to hit this to hit to take a picture, you hit anywhere on the screen and it snaps a photo. Now, as I did that, I just snapped about eight photos. Nice. But I like that because when you're trying to do one of these numbers, <laughs> you guarantee hit the photo because the whole screen becomes a button. I love that. Um, it has some great filters. It's made by Smug Mug. It's free. Um, they, there are some paid add-ons for it, but you can tell this app was really developed by a very big photo enthusiast. So that's one. Since we're doing alternative camera apps, what do you have as an alternative camera app to throw into the mix? Oh, goodness. What the heck have I been using? Does it have to be one just for pictures or just using actually utilizing the camera? Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. Now, my favorite one, it utilizes the camera just because it's kind of cool. It's called Flow and it's by Amazon. And what it allows you to do. Amazon, Amazon? Amazon. Yeah. Well, all right. You, you, taught, you taught me something. <laughs> so, what you can do is, I wish we had a uh, barcode somewhere around here. But what you do is you hold it over the barcode and you see these little blue dots kind of move on the screen. And once it focuses, it actually pulls up reviews, the cost on Amazon of that product. It's kind of nifty, especially when trying to find a quick review. I've, this has been a lifesaver. We're about to buy something and it looked pretty crappy. I put it out there and I, yeah, it was crappy. Other times too, I was like, <laughs> hey, this, I don't know, this looks kind of interesting. We put on an amazing reviews on Amazon. So, oh cool, we got a, got a barcode here. Here, yeah, yeah. while you barcode that, Tim, tell us what you got. I know it sounds generic, but Instagram, I use it every day. It's my most used app, probably. It's Not generic at all. Everyone, yeah, they, they I, mean, guys I use it every day. And then I, I never found a need for like camera awesome, even though it sounds awesome, which it probably is, because you have access to the lock screen for the built-in camera app. I find myself using that more and more just because it's so darn easy to use. So that's why I don't use camera awesome things like that. I mean, it's, mm, I'm an easy guy. I just like simplicity. I'm, you know? I'm a photographer so I think I kind of like that thing a little bit more that's cool it does show you the cable off. that's awesome I like and you that. can order right from Amazon done of, of course <laughs> can you put yeah. your your own uh, affiliate code in there so you get paid for it I did not see that option that was a joke you know, that'd be a good option though <laughs> that'd be a great that'd option be awesome, yeah. all right going down and I really didn't want to cover two camera apps but it's not really a camera app next thing on my thing is a thing called cloud photos Cloud Photos is cool because a few months ago, you guys might remember, I dropped my phone into a large cup of water on Friday. I got a new phone, but instead of being at the biggest phone, I went down to the cheapest phone because that's all the money I had. Um, so Cloud Photos, when you take a photo, it automatically sends it to Dropbox and leaves just a thumbnail on your device so you don't lose all your drive space overnight, especially with an eight megapixel camera. <laughs> and it's great, syncs with Dropbox. I made a video about it, it's on YouTube. I'll put it in the show notes, go check it out. So that's Cloud Photos, that's my second. Go ahead, Jerome. My next one is going to have to be, I've actually started using this, it's called Snap Guide. And what it is, it's kind of, if you enjoy doing stuff, you can actually take little video guides on how to make stuff. So 
it kind of has a little bit of a social aspect also. So it kind of shows, hey, for example, the first one on here, how to create a planter box for AI. I know it's that small. But um, so you can actually watch this and it teaches you a whole bunch of things. It's like YouTube, but the interface is a lot better and no advertisements inside there. I have SnapGuy too. I love <laughs> SnapGuy. SnapGuy is awesome. It's a great way to do tutorials for people in your family. Kind of like, I mean, it looks almost like Instagram for or a guy, right? Kind of like Instructables. Very cool. I very cool. Instructable before. Okay, my next app uh, just came out a couple days ago. Very simple, but I'm using it every day now. Bluetooth on slash off. All it does is let you turn on Bluetooth on and off without going four layers to the settings app. Saves me minutes upon minutes every day, which add up to hours and hours each year and month and everything. How much so you turn on your Bluetooth? I do it all day long. So I'm <laughs> switching between Bluetooth on here and my iPad, and they conflict when they're both on, trying to Got connect it. the same thing. So Bluetooth on off, 99 cents, still in the App Store. It's pretty awesome. So. Very cool, very cool. All righty, um, going down the chain. Right now, MLB at bat. Oh. Gotta watch Gold Sox, uh, <laughs> simple app. Keep up with baseball. If you pay the subscription, you can watch games. But if you don't pay the subscription, video highlights, everything, it will be at, at bat. I mean, right now you ask, is this season? Go for that. You. It's the season. You know what? Since uh, I used to take the bus quite often, and there were the only real way to kind of track your bus schedule was to actually go on Google Maps, look up the bus, and sometimes it was off. It didn't show like the correct schedule. There's the bus app Ooh. from our city and county. <laughs> Woohoo! It's free. Um, one cool thing is you can set your favorite bus stops. You can actually use the map. It shows you the bus stops in the area. You can kind of jump on there, find out where you're going. Now, if you come to visit Hawaii, it helps out a lot to use the bus. It's cheap and it gets you around. Okay, Tim, go. Next up is Convert Box or a Bot. Uh, tap called, bots. Buy, buy tap bots. Uh, so I, I found a too. need for um, converting megabytes into bytes because uh, RSS feeds. When you're putting in data uh, as far as how big an audio file is, they like bytes. So, I don't, uh, you know, Googling it didn't really help. Siri, it sort of did it, but this worked a lot better. You can do other conversions if you're a normal person, just like cooks, you know, you go from, you know, teaspoons, to tablespoons, yeah. whatever, you know, you do in the kitchen. So, uh, convert bot, pretty awesome. All right, so my next app here is going to be an application called Line. Line allows you to instant message, chat, and make voice calls to people internationally. Line is from a company called Neighbor in Japan, and I know there's Viber and Tango and a bunch of other things out there. This one is sort of the best, especially if a lot of the people that you're talking to are from Japan because it sort of fits the lifestyle. Super dope app, totally free, highly recommend it. What Emoticons do you got next? too. Emoticons, yeah. <laughs> what do you got next? My next one is uh, sticking with the communication theme, Be Jive I Am. Um, I have friends that are on Yahoo Instant Messenger, or, um, Microsoft Instant Messenger, Gmail, just all over the place, and trying to kind of put it all under one roof is almost impossible. So I found BeeJive I am, and it actually allows me to put in, it supports all different protocols. You can just plug it in and then chat with all your friends. Cool, my next app is Quick AdSense. I use Google AdSense on YouTube and other places, and uh, it's a handy place to just open the app, see how much money, sorry, see how much money I made today, and uh, <laughs> Uh, you're able to ch uh, change ranges and stuff and uh, see how many people have actually looked at your website. And it's a pretty nifty ad app. It's uh, 99 cents. It's called Quick uh, AdSense. Well, the tapping noise you hear in your podcast is Tim hitting the mic with his phone. Just want to let you know that. I'm <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> anyway, so my <laughs> next app is definitely, it's on a podcast related. And it's a pod catcher. A pod catcher is an application that allows you to get podcasts directly to the application versus syncing through iTunes. And this one is called Eyecatcher. Yes, Eyecatcher. And remember, it's Eyecatcher with the exclamation mark. The thing I like about this app is, say I'm listening to a podcast like Mac OS Ken, and I hear half of it on my phone. I press stop. Using iCloud, it will sync. When I open it on my iPad, we're at the exact same place. It has tons of features that you can use for organizing, uh, how many you want to keep, gestures for playback and things like that. It's it's. I would say complicated, but it's not that it's hard. It just has a lot of features. It covers almost every base in a good podcatcher. It's only like two bucks. So check out iCatcher, and I would say that's good. And then remember, you can use it to check out the Nonstop Tech Podcast. That's true. We are a podcast, after all. Are we? No, actually, my last one, because um, you know, you'll be spending a lot of money on all these apps we're recommending. It's going to be Mint. So if you oh. haven't heard of Mint, um, it allows you to plug in like your bank accounts. It allows you to plug in your credit card. Um, bills, just car, how much your car is worth, credit card rating, all this stuff. 
and it gives you suggestions and it shows you how to kind of gives you goals you can meet to pay off your debt it shows you how much you have when your payments are due it shoots you a little push notification and best of all won't break the bank it's free very cool my last app uh, along similar lines of docs is podcaster I use it uh, similarly to Doc, where I sync podcasts every day, I listen to music, uh, not music, but podcasts. And I use it since I've uh, basically got it back in 2007 when we had the jailbreaker iPhones to get apps onto them. And uh, kind of nostalgia, I still continue to use it because of that. I've tried the other ones, and they're all good. There's a lot of good ones out there, including iCatcher, but I still uh, love the podcaster app. Very cool. So remember, um, just like Gene and Tom, if you want to ask us a question, you can send us an email to doc at nonstophonolulu.com, Jerome at nonstophonolulu.com, Tim at nonstophonolulu.com, or just questions at nonstophonolulu. <laughs> Anywhere, you send us an email, and we'll put that out. You can also tweet us, hit us up on the Facebook page, and uh, maybe we need to set up a Google Voice so that people can call in. Oh, that'd be fun. We need to have a cool like number, though. I'm going to make a cool oh, number. Oh, we'll have a cool number. <laughs> yeah. If, if Google Voice doesn't work, maybe we'll check out phone.com, which is pretty awesome. Can you get 808? Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different story. We won't get yeah. into that. Now, one thing I wanted to cover today in this show, um, this goes for Tim. Yeah, you. <laughs> What's that? I have been, for the last three to four years, always soapboxing my angst against the jailbreak. Because I always say it, it's kind of like steel. Even in 2007 when we couldn't get apps, uh, it, was, it was exciting times. You know? Zip your face. <laughs> Zip your face. It's like, uh, I gotta shit. say, it, it was kind of right. like stealing. <laughs> However, just this week, it has been proven that jailbreaking or anything else that you may do to break a terms of agreement is no longer illegal. So it's not just jailbreaking in general. It, it's the breaking of the terms of service. The thing that made jailbreaking, quote unquote, illegal prior wasn't the actual act. It was the, you're breaking a term of service. But a federal judge decided that breaking terms of service is not technically illegal. Now, you still can get a civil suit. Yeah. I wish we had our buddy Ryan here, Ryan Hugh, to explain this a little bit better because I'm not a lawyer, so don't listen to me. But you can get sued on a civil suit for doing something you shan't have done but you can't get thrown in jail but what company's going to sue someone yeah else? like so apple's going to come PR. after the little guy like Isn't i it? didn't say that i'm just reading you the I facts know. technicalities right i'm just reading you the facts don't read into <laughs> it just i'm not going to bitch anymore about you thieving conniving jailbreaking sons of whatever hey, right. I don't jailbreak well my, i got my ipad jailbreak it's a beautiful thing and anyways, yeah. yes. We disagree. Um, yes. <laughs> Most people jailbreak because they don't want to pay for apps. Well, I do it because I want to tether. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. like saying, no, that's like saying, I stole this food to feed my family. It's admirable, but it's still stealing. Well, anyway, you know. so the main thing is you won't go to jail anymore. So you're off the hook and we can tell the FBI that no one's going to come and arrest him. Excellent. All right. Cool. So what else was happening really good in the news? That was a really... The most major thing that happened in news. Other than that, it's just all these rumors coming on oh. about the next phone or the next iPad computer. Mini, yeah. I mean, some cool NAB mini. stuff come out, but nothing huge uh, for most people out here. Yeah, watching. that's for us nerd yeah. birds. Yeah. We can leave the NAB people out. <laughs> uh, other than, I think I think it'll be a quick one. That was the first show we did with two user questions, and they were big user questions. Yeah. Uh, Gene had some other stuff which we'll need to cover, but I should guess I should tell you guys what they are so you can prepare. Gene also wanted to know a little bit about routers. Wanted to know a little bit about webmail, and would you guys please hurry up and do your show on Evernote, period, point blank. Oh, we got to do that. We've been talking about yeah. this for a while, yeah. but Evernote is so huge, it's like eight, nine shows in and of itself. We can take one oh, segment at a time, right? We didn't mention, if your mobile me user still, you can get free upgrade uh, oh, Snow Leopard. Yes, Hooray. this is very true. So, if you are a mobile me user, uh, Apple wants to make sure that you're ready to go to iCloud. Um, this is going to go away at the end of May, early June. So you're going to want to make sure you have this together. A lot of people say they have it upgraded because they didn't want to pay the 29 bucks. Plus another 29. It's Plus like, oh, another it's 29. Bucks it's it's like 60 bucks. Bank, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? We're not Windows. We're not charging you 500 bucks for an upgraded OS. But okay, we'll get, we're going to take away the douchebag route and we're going to give you a free Snow Leopard upgrade so you can just go to apple.com and get the information. 
You'll get a free snow leopard disc. So now you can upgrade the lion. So now you can go to iCloud completely and it'll be great. And uh, mm -hmm. if you have a, a machine that's just outside the rules, say a core two dual that for some reason doesn't fit the lion spec, there is a way to actually install a lion on it and it's relatively easy. And I think I'll make a custom video for that and show you guys how that's done. Because I have a machine that fits that description. And security wise, it's good to be up yeah, to date. Yeah, it's always good to be up to date. Mm -hmm. It's always good to be up to date. Yep. So here's a primary one. In the news this week, headlines, all right? <laughs> Apple has its second uh, malware attack within two weeks. For people who have an old version of Word, who haven't updated for I don't know how long. Yeah, so you read the headline, <laughs> and everyone's like, oh my God, and everyone Sweet. freaks out. If you stopped at the headline, you freak out. When you read the paragraph, it tells you that the only way to get infected by this <laughs> is to open a Word document that has this jacked up macro in it, and you have to be on Office 2004 and have not have updated your software since like 2005. See, Doc, you automatically separate the user base by saying you're running Word 04 still. That's like... <laughs> if you're running know. Word 04 and you get malware, <laughs> you deserve malware because you're supposed to be in a new world we are. Anyway, so keep your software up to date. Remember, if you are going to surf while you're in a, in a Wi-Fi unsecured area, make sure you look for HTTPS. Get a plug in like HTTPS anywhere and just sort of be smart about what you're doing. And uh, yeah, if you want to tell us what's on your phone, let us know. Again, questions, comments, feedback, send us an email, questions at nonstophonolulu.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and please leave us a review on iTunes. There you go. That's it. All right, people, we'd like to thank you so much for watching this edition. We'll see you again next week. Aloha and mahalo. I thought you can do shotguns. Oh, shotguns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need to learn that one. I, my fingers don't do it right. All right. It hurts a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. right, I got to do muscle. Uh... <laughs>